Hi everyone, I am here today to actually share both some do's and don'ts on installing silky hair for a crochet install. Crochet is one of my favorite ways to wear my hair. It gives me access to my scalp. Um, instead of like with weaves, I always get scalp itch, so I usually don't wear weaves. And instead of having your cornrows in when Boo is around and taking off your wig, you can always keep your crochet in and wear it up, down, and still look fabulous. One of the first and most important steps is a great foundation for your crochet braids. Here I have a braid pattern with 14 braids in the front, one in the back, and the middle braids connect amongst each other. So now I'm just taking the two pieces that are hanging from the excess of my braids and actually looping them through the braids that have been pulled up and connected into the other braids rather than actually sewing those pieces down. The hair we're going to be using for this tutorial is Outre Bahamas Curl. It was really, really great. I saw another YouTuber use it and I fell in love with it. So I decided I wanted to give it a try. I'm actually using six packs and I am not cutting the hair in half. The hair is about 18 to 20 inches long. I can't remember right now, but you can see it's super long and really silky. To start off with, you want to make sure you break the hair down before installing. Ladies, learn from me. This saves time. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to start in the back so that you guys can see. I am going to do what is known as the under loop or no knot method on this perimeter braid so that we are able to pull it up in a ponytail and look really natural and not have any knots show. This method, as you can see, is going to leave that braid actually exposed, but when you pull up from the back, it's going to look really natural when you put it into a ponytail. So a close up of what I did, I take a piece of hair and I pierce under the braid. I grab the loop of the hair in the crochet needle. I pull that through, re-pierce in a different spot, pull through on another leg of that hair and pull that through fully and pull the two opposing legs until it tightens. We're going to do it one more time because I know I'm going really fast and you guys can rewind, but I just want to give you an opportunity to see it again. So we're going to pierce under the braid, grab the loop in the crochet needle, re-pierce really close next to the place that we originally pierced, grab one leg with the crochet needle, pull it through, and pull in opposite directions to tighten. And as you can see, the hair loops over the braid. Now, once we start crocheting the rest of our hair, there's no need to worry about if the center braid is going to show because it won't. It just allows us to be able to have a knotless perimeter all around. So we're going to start actually doing that same technique from the beginning of the perimeter braid. And I want you to see it from the front. Look how close I'm actually getting to my edge. I'm not crocheting my edges. I am just getting very close. This is very important because when you pull up your hair into that ponytail that we're doing this perimeter braid for, it looks very natural once your edges start to grow out. So same thing here, pierce under the braid, grab the loop, pull through, re-pierce next to it, grab one leg and the crochet needle, pull that through, then pull the rest of the leg all the way through to where you have one leg of hair on one side, one leg on the other side, and pull to tighten. Now, 
I've done the first two braids with that technique. I'm just showing you again, once I get to the second braid, how close I'm getting to my edge so that it looks super, super natural once all of it starts growing out. Now this is my inspection just to show you that we're done with doing the invisible or knotless method or underloop method, sorry. Showing you how it looks all the way around. And now we're going to start moving towards the center braids which we use a different technique. Notice these top pieces of hair. Those are my markings for where I want to continue the invisible method for my parts. But moving to the center now. In the center, we start to do what is known as the twist method. That's what I call it. I'm starting to use this technique because when you get to the center of your hair, it's extremely difficult to do the under loop method on yourself. So this is an easier technique to get these braids together. To make life easier, I started doing the twist method on the inner braids. So, to show you exactly what I just did, I grabbed a piece of hair and then I pierced under the braid just like last time. Grab that loop, I'm pulling it through and then I'm going to sit here, twist a few times, one, two, three, loop that whole hair through, twist again, and then we're going to loop it back through and pull it down so that a knot is created. Ladies, another time to learn from my mistake. Notice how big that piece was and notice how big this piece is that I am picking up. When you break down your hair, Break it down into smaller pieces or your knots will not lock when you do this method. See again as I pull it through, I twist one, two, three. Oh, nope, didn't work. Let's try it again. <laughs> We're going to go under. We're going to twist one, two, skip one, one, two, pull it through, then pull on the leg. And it creates a knot. And see how when I just pulled it down, you can see how neat those knots are all the way across. Again, if you break your hair into smaller pieces, as I have done here, you can see those knots without me pulling. So, see how small these pieces are compared to the pieces that I was using in the previous clip. And when I pull on it, my knot stays, and now you can see all my knots going across. That is exactly how you want your hair to look when you're doing this. So, again, on how we're doing this method, just to make sure we got it, we pierce under that braid. We grab the loop of that small, skinny, skinny piece of hair under, we're going to twist one, two, uh, and three. And then we're going to pull that hair through. We're going to twist again. One, hmm, I guess I got tired. <laughs> pull again through, twist again, and then pull and twist. Now, see, I started in the beginning twisting three times, pulling it through, twisting three times. And then I started a technique of me actually twisting once, pull through, twisting again, pull through. It does not matter as long as you twist that hair first. You have to twist it first, like I just did, then pull it through. Twist and pull through. If you do not twist when you first try to put this hair through, it will not lock. Do not loop that hair, then pull it through without twisting first. So again, for good measure to make sure we got what the technique is, I go under the braid with the needle, pull the loop through. Twist, twist, twist. Make sure you do that twist first. 
There we go. Pull the hair through. Twist. Pull through. Twist. Pull through. Twist. That's the technique. Twist, pull through. Twist, pull through. Twist, pull through. And then you pull on the knot. So I did that technique all over and this was my final product. Remember I used the invisible method where you saw those pieces of hair at the top where I was denoting that it was going to be my parts. So that I can have parts without knots. So this is my side part and there are no knots showing. It looks very realistic because I used the technique that we used on the perimeter braid. I also have it in the center so that I can have a center part with no knots. That looks really, really natural. So just remember, pick a few braids where you want to do the same technique that we used on the perimeter braid at the top where you want your parts to show so that you don't have.